Clinical Pearls, brought to you by Medicom Oncology. Welcome to Managing MDS. My name is Rami Kumrukti and I'm Professor of Oncologic Sciences and Clinical Director in the Malignant Hematology Department at the Moffitt Cancer Center. So, I get frequently asked about my making the diagnosis of chronic myelomonocytic leukemia or CMML, or like when we see monocytosis, how we make the, the diagnosis. Obviously, this is very related to patients with myelodysplastic syndrome as well as patients with myeloproliferative uh, neoplasms. Uh, CMML used to be part of diagnosis of or, or part of the subtypes of MDS. In the new WHO uh, classification, there is a group called myelodysplastic slash myeloproliferative uh, diseases where CMML uh, is the, the most common subtype of that group. Uh, in patients where there is proliferative CMML, which means the white blood cell count is increased, those are easy probably to tease out from straightforward myelodysplastic syndrome. However, in the non-proliferative uh, CMML, where the white blood cell count is often below 10,000, I think it's the increase in the monocytes that makes that distinction. So by the WHO criteria, actually dysplasia is sometimes even not required to make diagnosis of CMML, which is different from the other types or subtypes in MDS. So presence of persistent monocytosis more than three months without obviously a reactive cause uh, is adequate to make diagnosis of CMML. One of the important points is to look at the differential diagnosis and make sure that those monocytes are more than 10% uh, because it's not just the absolute monocyte count, particularly when the white blood cell count is high. Uh, it's easy to reach that 1,000 uh, absolute monocyte count that's required by the WHO for diagnosis of CMML, but usually it has to be more than 10%. Now, nowadays we are starting to have some more uh, additional help or, or uh, complementary tests in, in making diagnosis of CMML. For example, data from somatic gene mutations or next-gen sequencing can help us, although they are not part of the diagnosis. But there are certain mutations frequently uh, encountered in, in patients with CMML, and, and they happen to, together. For example, when we see patients with, with monocytosis and we see evidence of a TET2 and SRSF2 mutation uh, by NGS, uh, then that's a, a complementary uh, or, or aiding piece of information to the diagnosis. Also, there had been suggestions of certain use for flow cytometry, that there are patterns where we could distinguish the monocytes, whether they are inflammatory or primary monocytes in, in CMML. So we are starting to incorporate those. So uh, in summary, I think, uh, obviously, if patients have proliferative CMML, then there will be leukocytosis, which we should not be seen typically in MDS. In non-proliferative CMML, if patients have persistent monocytes, more than 1,000, then 10% of the differential, uh, that is suggestive of CMML, and nowadays we complement that by looking at data from next-gen sequencing and probably some data from flow cytometry that will tell us that those monocytes are not reactive. Don't forget to subscribe to the Medicom Oncology podcast channel for more clinical pearls. And be sure to visit managingmds.com for more practice resources.